Do you remember back in high school, which might for you it was probably sometime before Captain Cook came out to Australia, right? <laughs> yeah. That's um, right, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> and Marconi was in short pants. Um, <laughs> the uh, an RF signal can be defined by multiplying, say, two sine waves. Uh, the uh, and. If you remember back to Trig, and if that was the last time you actually had to do this, it just means it's not very important anyway, but you get a batch of cos cosine waves, and if you start adding cosine waves and sine waves together, you can get some uh, cancellation, which is really handy, because sometime in the 1930s, a smart mathematician worked out that single sideband can be generated with mathematics. And once you can do that, you can get the, the sound card and the PC to do all the boring number crunching, which in the past we've had to do with um, audio phasing arrays and um, all-pass filter networks and other things to uh, get our single sideband right. It wasn't until the 1950s um, that uh, after the war, a whole lot of people were starting to use their old ARC-5 transmitters and a few other war surplus things and made phasing, SSB phasing transceivers transmitters. But the, uh, there is a, a, a bit of a problem generating a 90 degrees phase shift in uh, the RF as, uh, works on a, a narrow band of frequencies if you're going to do it with an LNSC network or an RNSC network. But these days we've got digital logic gates and it's uh, a lot more convenient these days if you're generating a, say, your oscillator signal with um, digital and you can get a 90 degrees phase shift by running through a couple of flip flops. If I do, oh yeah, I might, might do this. Um, you know, forgive me if I forget the logic gates. It's been a while. Uh, these are just D flip flops. And there's a, a Q. Gee, this takes me back to TAFE. <laughs> Q and a Q bar. Uh, with an oscillator, we make do with crystals. And this comes out at logic levels. Goes in one clock pulse, comes out clock pulse. Uh, I think it goes like this into D and this one goes up there. You get a um, signal that comes out of the Q bar there and here it... Um, in the matrix gray smoke out. Yeah, if you don't let the gray smoke out. There's no degrees delay between the two. I mean, without having to do the uh, truth table which is boring. I think it's because um, every second clock pulse comes out here, goes back into here as well, it ends up being dividing by 4. So if, in this case there's a 14 megahertz crystal. Uh, if I you do it this way, it comes out on 3579 kilohertz. So that's pretty close to the um, broadcast frequency of 3595 if it's within the range of the sound card. Um, now there's nothing to listen to, but I was listening to the uh, broadcast earlier this morning, so it did work here. Now, the other way of doing it is same chip, another one here, but using an XOR gate, one goes there, one goes there, and that goes there, that goes up high, that one goes low. This one's already inverted, so you still get the 90 degrees phase shift, and you only need twice the frequency. Uh, that, that's okay if you've got the, uh, the crystals and that sort of thing. And it also means you don't have to have a, such a high range on the oscillator, so if you want it just from, say, 0 to 30 megahertz, you only need a DDS or some sort of VFO that goes only up to 60 instead of 100. Another way to do it, if you don't have these sort of frequencies and you're maybe going, going to have a VFO or maybe a, a lower frequency oscillator, is same thing, but if the amplifier is 50 ohms output, you can have a resistor, capacitor, it's an output, and capacitor, resist it down here. 50 ohms. Now if XC equals 50 ohms and this is 50 at the frequency of operation. So for, let's say it's back to 40 meters, 
this is all, uh, this is 50 ohms. This is um, about 470 PF, and so is that. And of course, this is also 50 into the amplifier you get at the up at the other end. And here's a 90 degrees phase shift here. So we've got the zero degrees and 90 degrees, and that's what's referred to as the in phase component, this one's the quadrature component because it's 90 degrees out. The first SSB transmitter I built here yeah. was from similar to that yeah. one. It was okay for about 500 kilohertz. Yeah. Because I, I did it at yeah. 9 meters mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, then beat the resulting signal to the appropriate 20 meters or, 40, um, no. or 80 meters and, and 20 meters, did you? Oh, I had, yeah. no, I had all, all yeah. bands. It was a, yeah. a band switch with a crystal yeah. for each band. Yeah. And that's, a, that's the disadvantage of doing it with an R and a C. You're relying on the uh, reactive components having the, being the same as the resistive ones, and that only gives you a narrow range. So maybe... Um, what sort of spread, what, uh, what's the tolerance on phase shift? Across, you know, like you want 90 degrees difference. Yeah. If you've got 91 degrees or 80 degrees, what's, how bad can it... Well, in um, up in the, the un unwanted side, yeah, your uh, image cancelling is gone, and yeah. the um, it, and that's what gave the uh, phasing transceivers in the fifties a really bad name. But at that same time, once the the nineteen sixties came around and all the commercial transceivers were coming out, they were all in um, they were nine megahertz Collins filters, and everyone started doing those. And it wasn't a problem if the uh, if the capacitors were. You know, I had the facilities available to yeah. make sure the capacitors were the same Matching value them, yeah. and the resistors were exactly the same value. Yes. And the higher in frequency you do it, of course, uh, the less yeah. problem there is. And, uh, it, it was, the circuit was described in shortwave magazines mm. in 1955. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I used it for years. Yeah, it's, um, and that's probably why it got, it's quite good. And your cell phone works the same way now, so it's just that our components have got better. The audio phase cancellation was a, the phase shift was a little harder to do because the, uh, you're going uh, from, say, 200 hertz to 2 kilohertz, that's, uh, that's an entire decade. And it was, uh, you had to get really matched components and uh, make sure you're band limited, otherwise, uh, uh, SSB doesn't really come out too good, and these um, these days we can do that a lot easier with a say pile of op amps, or even well even the sound card in the laptop is what does it for the uh, the SDR rigs now. Um, with uh, with the Genesis in the nuts and bolts version of it, the uh, I think it uses a SI570 oscillator. Yes. Yeah, that's pre that's a programmable one, so it doesn't work like a VFO. You've got the, the software's the clever bit. If you say you type in uh, 14200 um, megahertz, 14.2 megahertz, and it'll set the VFO there, set the oscillator there, and then use the uh, uh, software in the sound card to get to get all the other frequencies in there. You can't just go tuning around like you would a normal radio show. You've got to figure that one out too. Others. Um, might, the software might actually drive a DDS chip, so it's, uh, it depends on the software and hardware you've got. Um, in, in this electronics, it's, uh, the detector chip is a, a switching... Uh, boy. Sorry about the eyes, they just don't work as well as they used to. That one's a 74HC... What is it? Uh, 4052. Uh, the 4053 is uh, another triple switch. The 4066 is a quad switch. That's um, that's being used a lot of times, and that works quite well. Um, and all it is is really a balanced switching detector. Um, it doesn't rely on the nonlinearity of a, uh, say, a FED or um, uh, some other semiconductor. It's um, fairly predictable on and off, which, which I think is a whole lot easier to deal with. And you know what's going to come out, but it does respond to harmonics. So if you if your oscillator is um, on no, three megahertz, and it responds to things on six and twelve. Uh, so you need a, a low pass filter on the front end for filtering out harmonics. Um, to work that out, well, back to truth tables. Every time you've got a logic one on the um, on the oscillator, there's um, things coming through from the input. But for uh, simple hardware, I think it's uh, quite quite good. And for generating the SSB signal, 
it's really the same thing. Same electronics, there's um, a couple of op amps, the, the switching chip, and uh, then after that it's off to amplifiers to the, uh, the antenna. And the, um, it's the laptop or the PC at Soundcard which does all the work. Um, it's not much I can think of. I have the same with the Genesis does it. Unless you get the two signals being exactly the same amplitude, yeah. you have trouble. Uh, yeah, and I've actually found that this morning, um, watching the 40 meter AM broadcast, um, not only there was the actual AM signal, but there was images at, I think it's 10 kilohertz either side or 20 kilohertz either side. So you do uh, have problems with high signal levels, but you, um, you do have to match the amplitudes of um, the uh, left and the right, or the I and the Q signals, um, otherwise the sound cards not going to be able to balance um, get the ca image cancellation in this particular hardware there's um, a pot which uh, I used to uh, adjust the the gains of the two channels but in the software um, okay it's um, the one called SD radio by I2 I have that written down there come back oh, shut down never mind Oh, there it is. Yeah, um, it's uh, freely available on the internet, uh, but there's AGC on it, so it didn't matter what I did on the uh, pod, it uh, still, still worked it out. Uh, there are other software packages. There's the, um, the DRM uh, software, which was used if you're gonna, whenever there was DRM, shortwave broadcasting. And that, that worked okay. Um, DRM finished, is it? Died in this country. But, the Chinese and Indian governments are going for it, and there's two billion customers there. So if, they, if they go, that goes ahead, the, uh, there'll be a few. But Radio Australia um, had to dump it. Uh, yeah, if I go back to. Oh. Well, they don't have the same internet connectivity as we do. No, no. Yari. I thought that was like these days when you had to actually pay for the software. Yeah. Um, yeah, I heard that. So, I mean, one guy, there's only one guy that actually wrote it, but I, th I think there were a couple of versions out. Um, okay, uh, the one called SD, SD Radio. Uh, wasn't there a VK5 was writing one? Yeah. Uh, might, if you want, if this this will work. Oh, it'll work. <laughs> well, I'm not too good with these technical things. Newfangled thinking boxes. <laughs> Uh, hang on. Uh, what's the button that says mm -hmm. that? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Whee! Okay, well, I forgot a battery. You might just uh, gas it up a little. But, um. Let's see what. Uh, it might be noise, but I'll just give you. Quick demo of. Yeah. We'll probably only see just noise here. Uh, can't see shit nowadays. Now, turn it on. Let's see what have we got there. Bad sound card device. Not really. <laughs> there we go. Receive. Righty ho. Now, what's this thing right here, I wonder? Couldn't have been too important. But anyway, the. Um, uh, set, you can set the bandwidth on this thing by. Uh, uh, come back. Now this here, 7144, that's probably what we listened to earlier. Oh, I can't hear anything on that, never mind. Um, if, if there were happen to be activity on 40 meters around about then, you'd see a whole lot of little spikes coming up there. You just move the cursor a lot along the place and, until you um, actually find, some, find something. And it doesn't have to be, I've watched signals that 
are even not much more than the, or even this level, and it's quite you hear it quite well. Uh, yeah, it's um, 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 Alberto I2 PhD. You can download it off the net. It's uh, it unzips from a meg, I think. Um, oh, there's, uh, there's probably a couple of configurations. Let's see, sound card. Well, I'm using that thing. I was hoping to get to a point where you didn't have, all you had to do was plug a cable into the, the laptop and you'd be away. Maybe portable. But a lot of these things, they don't get, um, you've got to need sound card inputs and sound card outputs and RS232 inputs. So I think. Uh, my uh, dreams of having a, a compact digital station is oh well, <laughs> wasting my time. Anyway, um, if uh, that's probably all we're going to say about this. Anyone's actually interested in the, in the nitty gritty, or come and see me, and I'll, I'll give you some details. But uh, all, all this information is quite e easily available on the net because that's where I got it. Yeah. Okay. We'll shut this sucker off.